Corral Draw Tips and Tricks with Steve Spence. Today's session, Imprinting Ceramic Tiles. Brought to you by Kunde Systems. Ceramic tiles have a special place in the world of sublimation. We've been making them from almost the beginning. And they're fairly easy to make, although they do take a bit more time. Starting at about eight and a half minutes and going up to 12 and a half minutes, they take a fair investment in time. And therefore, it's important that each tile that you make is made correctly the first time. Little mistakes can be very costly, both in the cost of the tile, but more importantly, in cost of your time. So in this session, we'll take just a moment to talk about creating the graphic for a ceramic tile. First of all, you need to know that not all tiles are equal. Tiles come in a variety of sizes. The common idea is that tiles are four and a quarter by four and a quarter inches. And that's not necessarily so. So you have to actually measure the tile you're working with. Some are only four inches, some are four and an eighth, some are four and three eighths. They change from manufacturer and type of tile. So first thing is to know what size tile you're working at. In this particular case, I've created a box that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that would be a generic ceramic tile. But when we're working with sublimation, we're going to make a change in that size. And we're going to add a little bit of extra space. Now, the reason we want to add the extra space, one, is just because it makes things easier. But two, because the ceramic tile has a rounded edge on all four sides. At least most of them do. And that rounded edge takes a little extra transfer to make. So we'll make this box, rather than four and a quarter, we'll make it actually four, four point four five. We're going to add one tenth of an inch in each direction. Now we could just make it four and a half or five and call it done. But sometimes we need to get the image on the tile in a specific place. If you can just throw the thing on there and it doesn't really matter how it's aligned, then you can use a, any size box you want or not use a box at all. But in our case, we're going to say that we want the image to appear in a specific way. In this particular case, we're going to put an image in. Let's get rid of this one. We're going to put an image in that really doesn't fit. We'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole image. And as you can see, this image is never going to fit on ceramic tile. It's not going to fit because it's twice as long as it is tall. Now we could just reduce the size of it and see what happens. But what we really want to do is choose what we want on the tile. And with that bounding box that we created, we can do that. This picture is obviously too big, so we need to reduce it down. So I'm going to select the image and I'm going to go to bitmaps resample and you can see that we have a resolution of 386 dpi which is fine i'm going to change that to 300 because we just don't need any extra resolution and i'm going to change this to five inches now we have an image that fits better on the tile but obviously we still can't get the whole thing on there so what do we want do we want the basketball with just a little bit of the hoop do we want a lot of the hoop and very little of the basketball or do we want to kind of split the difference it's entirely up to you whatever looks good is the right thing in my eye that looks a little better than anything else so we're going to position it there 
I'm going to go to Effects, Power Clip, Place Inside Container, and there's our tile. Now, of course, you may need to mirror image that depending on what kind of software you're using. And if you do need to mirror image it, that's very easy to do. We go to Arrange, Transformations, Scale and Mirror. We select Horizontal Mirror and Apply. You see that it reversed it. The basketball's on the other side now. So when we position the tile over top of this image, there's going to be just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch actually, all the way around of image that doesn't actually fit on the tile. And that's important because that image is going to wrap around the curved edges of the tile and even then give us a little bit of extra. I call that slop room. Slop room or error room means that that tile can move a little bit when it's in the press. It can squirm a little bit. And tiles do change size. They move. And this allows it to move a little bit to expand or contract and still keep the image where it belongs. One of the worst things that can happen is finishing a tile after 8 or 10 minutes only to find out that one of the edges has a white streak in it. And that's caused by having a transfer that's too small. Now, if you're doing a mural, I would do it just a little bit different. And that is, rather than using a box that is 4.5, four or five or two tenths larger than the tile, I would reduce that down to only one tenth. Now the problem with that is you have to be really careful when you tape the transfer to the tile so that you cover the entire surface. Now the reason you want to do it that way is because when you put the tiles together, especially if it doesn't have spacers, you don't want to lose too much of the image between the tiles. We'll talk more about that in another session called Tile Murals. So, doing ceramic tiles. It's fun. It's challenging. It's very rewarding because the tiles are so beautiful when they come out of the press. And it can be very successful because the markup margin on ceramic tiles is very good, provided you create a transfer that is the right size the first time. Good luck!